All right, so let's see if we can divide these square roots without using a calculator. So the problem is we have the square root of 8 and we want to divide it by the square root of 3. Now, once again, no calculators, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to show you exactly how to divide these two square roots. All right, so once again, we have the square root of 8, and we want to divide it by the square root of 3. What is this equal to? Well, the correct solution is 2 times the square root of 6 over 3. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and the A+. plus. you be like, I missed you too, math man. The answer seems more complex than the actual question. Well, this is very important stuff, especially if you are studying algebra. But uh, if you really don't know what's going on here, I will explain everything step by step. So let's see exactly how to divide these two square roots right now. All right, so we have the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 3. Now, the first thing that I'm going to suggest is that we don't want to work uh, with division problems in this kind of manner. And this is uh, typical for any type of uh, situation. Let me uh, kind of give you an example. If I have 3 divided by 4, it's always a good idea to uh, look at this problem as a fraction. So 3 divided by 4 is the same thing as 3 fourths, okay? So the first thing we're going to want to do here is look at this problem in terms of a fraction. So we're going to look at it this way. We have the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 3, and that's going to be equal to the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 3. Remember, the first number here is the numerator, and this number down here is the denominator. Okay, so here is the situation. We have the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 3. And now let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do. Well, there's basically two things that we need to fix here, okay? Uh, and effectively, these are kind of uh, problems, if you will. But all these problems can be fixed. All right, so there is a situation going on with this square root of 3 down in the denominator. Now, uh, I'm going to just kind of highlight these problems. Okay? There, again, there's two. Matter of fact, if you know what the problem is, okay, what, uh, there's a problem with this square root of 3 in the denominator. What is the problem? Put that into the comment section if you think you know. And then right here, the square root of 8, this is its own kind of separate problem. So there's two things here that we need to address. And matter of fact, this particular problem can be done in a couple of different ways, but... Um, irrespective of what kind of steps you take, you're still going to end up at the same answer. Effectively, we're just going to be doing the same thing, just in different orders. But we're going to be addressing these two problems, okay? So a problem here and a problem here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first problem, and that is the square root of 3, okay? We can't have the square root of 3 in the denominator. This is not allowed. Now, why is this not allowed, okay? Well, let me go ahead and answer that question right now. The square root of 3 is something called an irrational number, okay? Now, what does that mean? Well, it's a decimal, okay? If we go into your calculator and take the square root of 3, you're going to get a decimal, and it's just going to go on and on. Matter of fact, I don't have my calculator here, but um, whatever the a decimal would be, I'm, I'm going to just take a quick <laughs> guess right here. Maybe something like 1.7 or the other. So it's going to go on and on and on, okay? I'm just going to give you an example of an irrational number. Matter of fact, we can use the irrational number like pi, okay? So pi is approximately equal to 3.14. Now, the decimals, the digits of pi uh, go on and on and on. They don't repeat and they don't terminate. In other words, they will never stop. They're going to go on forever and ever and ever. So if I want the full value of pi, I got to go out to infinity. And both you and I don't have that kind of time uh, because these digits, uh, there's no rhyme or reason. They're non-terminating and non-repeating. That's a definition of an irrational number. Another definition. Uh, uh, definition of an irrational number is a number that cannot be expressed as a fraction. So for example, if I have a decimal 0.25, this decimal terminates, okay? And this can be expressed as a fraction 1 over 4, all right? So, uh, you know, again, I'm talking you know, basic math concepts hopefully you're familiar with, but here's the deal. You cannot divide by an irrational number. Now, why can't you? Well, let's think about it for a second. Let's suppose we had a pizza, Okay, we're like, okay, awesome. Let's uh, divide this thing up by a number that uh, doesn't end. 
and doesn't terminate. And we're like, well, what exact value is this number? Well, it goes on and on and on and on and on. So we're not really you know, going to be able to know exactly how we can divide this pizza up, right? Because we're like, this number isn't, you know, conceptually doesn't make sense, okay, for an actual value. So that's kind of a, a basic uh, way you can maybe think of why we cannot divide by irrational numbers. Now, that's not to be confused by, let's suppose if I had the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 4, okay, don't confuse what's going on here with, oh, you can't divide by square roots. No, that's not the case, but because uh, the square root of four is a uh, rational number because the square root of four is two, okay? So the rule here is not, oh, you cannot divide by square roots. No, it's, it has to be specifically an irrational number. So things like the square root of three, square root of two, square root of seven, etc. All right, so that is our first problem that we need to uh, address is that, okay, well, I'm trying to divide by the square root of three. That's not allowed. So what do we need to do? Well, we got to fix this up and this is not difficult, but it's very important that you understand uh, how to fix these type of situations with dealing when you're dealing with square roots and radicals. Again, this symbol here, this is a square root symbol, but it's also called a radical. So in other words, uh, what I'm talking about here could be um, applicable to, let's say we're working with cube roots, okay? So, well, there's some, uh, at least uh, there's properties that carry over from square roots and cube roots, but I don't want to kind of go off on too many tangents, but again, I just want to make sure you, you realize that a lot of things that I'm talking about here don't only pertain to square roots. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how to fix this problem up. So we have the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 3. So what we're going to do to fix this situation is we're going to multiply this entire thing here, this entire fraction, by 1. Okay, now uh, anything times 1 is what? Well, it's just itself, right? So there's no problem if I uh, multiply a number by 1. We just get back to itself. That's what uh, something called the multiplicative identity. We don't need to know that. It's just common sense, right? So it's like, all right, 7 times 1 is 7. We get back to ourselves. So... What we're going to do here is multiply this fraction by 1, but we're going to use a very special fancy 1, and when we use this uh, 1, it's going to fix this problem. All right, so let's go and take that step right now, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't ask if it wasn't that important, and if you want to support my channel, this is the best way to do that. And uh, if you're going to subscribe, you might as well go hit that, uh, hit that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. But this helps the YouTube algorithm push out my content so I can find more people that are interested in math. And uh, really, who I'm trying to uh, find is those people that are on the verge of giving up on math. People that are just like, I hate math. I don't understand math. I just want to quit. These people I'm trying to uh, prevent from quitting. And if that's you, if you're frustrated with math or if you are you know, just don't like math, what you need to know is two things. One, there are no shortcuts. Okay, you got to put in the word. But the second thing is you got to find a great teacher, someone that can teach you in a way that you like and understand with a comprehensive instruction. And if you, can find, you can't find that teacher, I would like to be your teacher per se. Okay. So anyways, by you subscribing, it really does help me find those folks that are in dire need of math help. All right, so back to the problem. Okay, so remember, what we're going to do here is multiply this fraction by one. So here is the one that I am going to use. Okay, this right here, this um, value is one. It's a fancy looking one. Now, why is this one? Well, yeah, what I have here is a square root of three divided by the square root of three. Anything divided by itself is one. Okay, so square root of three divided by square root of three is in fact one. But I'm using this specific uh, one here uh, because this is going to really help me fix up this problem. All right, so let's go ahead and see what happens when I multiply the square root of 8 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, which, of course, is 1. Now, remember, we're dealing with fractions, and there's a couple of things that uh, you may not know, but I'll explain it right now. So when we're multiplying fractions, we have to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. Now, when we're multiplying square roots, okay, like the square root of 8 times the square root of 3, what we can do is write um, this as one square root, and what we're going to do is multiply the numbers underneath the square root. So 8 times 3 is 24. So the square root of 8 times the square root of 3 is equal to the square root of 24. 
Okay, so the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is going to be the square root of 3 times 3, which of course is 9. But look what happens here. Now I have the square root of 24 over the square root of 9 is 3. So I went away from dividing by an irrational number. Now I have this lovely whole number down here, 3. Okay, so this right here, the square root of 24 over 3 is equivalent to this problem right here, the square root of 8 over the square root of 3. But we're not done because we have to address that other issue. And let's go ahead and address that right now. Okay, so before um, we address this issue, let me just kind of um, uh, introduce you to something that hopefully you already know, and that's something called perfect squares. So here are examples of perfect squares. We have infinite amount of perfect squares. So 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Now, why would we call these perfect squares? Because we're taking these numbers like 2, we're squaring it, or 3, we're squaring it and four, we're squaring it. All these numbers right here, we can take the square roots and we get these lovely answers, like the square root of 16 is four, no decimals, no irrational numbers, etc. Now we wanna be on the lookout for these perfect squares, okay? These perfect square numbers as factors, okay? So in other words, right here, let me just kind of back up here, the square root of 24, this right here, can be simplified, okay? In other words, we're gonna to attempt to reduce it. Uh, let me give you a, uh, try to give you a better example. If I had a fraction like 100 over 300, uh, hopefully you could say, yes, I can easily reduce this fraction to the fraction one third, okay? So you're going to attempt to simplify and reduce a fraction. So in mathematics, you always wanna reduce your values, okay? Now here, the square root of 24, uh, we want to look at this and say, can I make that simpler? Okay, well, now we don't know the answer, but you always need to try to make your square roots uh, as simple as possible. So in other words, if you see something like the square root of 80, the square root of 40, the square root of 20, all these square roots right here can be simplified by using perfect squared factors. Okay, so let me go to show you now what I'm talking about. All right, so the square root of 24, okay, I want to think about different factors of 24. Now, of course, we have eight times three. Now, eight and three, or 12 times two, okay, is 24. But 12 and two, eight and three, these numbers here are not perfect squares. So I'm, they're not gonna really help me out. So I'm looking for perfect squared factors. So I'm looking at 24, I'm thinking, oh, how about six times four? Yes, that's perfect. So, because uh, we have four, that is a perfect square. Okay, these other thing, uh, numbers are factors of 24, but they're not perfect squares and really not gonna be able to help us out too much, but six and four can because four is a perfect square. Okay, so let's go ahead and break up this uh, square root of 24 and we're gonna think of 24 as the factors of this perfect square and, and whatever other uh, factor we need. Okay, so this is gonna be the square root of four times six. So here, okay, I have one big square root. Remember there's a property of square roots where I can write the uh, big square root, the square root of these factors as the square root of the individual factors. So I can write this as the square root of four times the square root of six over three. Now this is awesome because now I can take the square root of four. Okay, and of course the square root of four is two. So this is gonna be equal to two times the square root of six over three. This is the final answer. And if you're saying to yourself, well, this is just a lot of extra work. I don't have to do this on my math test. No, indeed, you have to, okay? If you don't turn in uh, this uh, answer, okay, for this particular question, if you left something undone, you would have points uh, be taken off and you would not be that happy. You'd be like, I should have been listening to that YouTube math man. He was right. Uh, listen, I've been doing this for a long time, decades and decades. I've made all the mistakes. I've taught, you know, a wide range of students from uh, students strong in math, students that are, you know, uh, struggle in math. It doesn't make a difference. Everything I say in my videos uh, is from experience, okay? And uh, irrespective of whether you are, you know, uh, struggling in math, uh, as long as you pay attention or you're strong in math, if you, you know, don't um, listen, okay, to, you know, what your teacher is telling you to do, and you're like, nah, that's not important. Well, you're going to learn by the school of hard knocks, right? Uh, and that's what I'm trying to kind of help you avoid, right? Especially those of you that are students, you got to get in there and you got to uh, do well on your exams and tests. 
And if you just like doing math, well, you know, if you ever come across a problem like this, you'll be like, yes, I know exactly what to do. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.